Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wampley here to show you how to fill out this second round of the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Lendio to hopefully make things a little bit easier. The focus of this is going to be what happens when you're trying to fill out that second round of PPP versus having it be a first draw. So, first things first is you're going to end up on a page that looks just like mine, where it's going to ask you to get started on your Paycheck Protection Program loan. It's going to ask you for your business name, first name, last name, email address, and phone number. After that, it says apply now. So all we're going to go ahead and do is click apply now. It's going to take you to a page that looks just like this. It takes a couple of seconds for it to be able to load. Once you get here, it's going to ask you to be able to create your new password. So make sure this is something that you're going to be able to remember until the end of time. Just in case you do have to come back to your application in any way, shape, form, or capacity, it's going to make life so much easier for you. Write it down somewhere if need be, and then press continue once you feel ready like you can get started. After that, it's going to say, let's get you started on the right path. It's going to say, are you applying for your first, uh, are you applying for your second PPP? Yes or no? We're going to go ahead and click yes, because that's going to be um, the best thing for us to do in this particular case. And then it's going to ask us for our first PPP SBA number. This is going to be the 10 digit number associated with your, uh, with your last SBA account. Six. So I've got that directly in here, and the total funded amount for your particular application. Once you've entered those directly into the system, all you're going to do is simply press Next. It takes a couple seconds and it says Getting Questions, and then it's going to ask for our basic business information. It says our business name, our business address. Again, make sure that you're clicking this from the drop down so that it automatically fills everything out directly in the system for you. If you do not select it from the drop down, it will not allow you to be able to continue with the rest of the application. Next, it'll ask for your DBA name. This is your doing business as name if applicable. Your business start date. This will be the day in which you started your official business. And your business type. So go ahead and click on this drop down and click the one that's going to be most applicable to you. In my case, it's going to be an S Corp. And then it's going to ask for your federal state tax ID. This is your EIN. As always, any and all information that I show you guys directly in these applications is 100% falsified for the sake of the demonstration. That way it's as ac accurate for your experience as possible. And then after that, it's going to have your industry. If you don't know what your industry is, go ahead and just uh, hold your mouse over the question mark. It says find the industry that most uh, closely represents your business while well, searching use general terms such as restaurant instead of coffee sh uh, instead of coffee shop. So we're going to go ahead and enter in marketing consulting services because that's going to be the thing that's most accurate for us. After that, it's going to have the total number of employees. Enter that into the best of your ability, and then it's going to ask you for your average monthly payroll. This is the total amount that you typically spend on payroll over the course of a year. After that, it's going to ask you, what year did you use to calculate your payroll? 2019, if you have not done your 2020 taxes yet, or 2020, if you do in fact have your 2020 taxes. I'm going to click 2019. After that, it says loan amount. Maximum loan amount that you could qualify for is 125. So we're going to go ahead and enter that directly into the system. As you can see, we went ahead and entered that directly into the system up here. And then last but not least, it's going to ask us for our loan purpose. It's going to give you a whole bunch of options. I want you to click the ones that are most applicable to you and your business. In mine, it's going to be payroll costs. But if you're planning on using this Paycheck Protection Program amount for things like rent and mortgage, utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage, supplier costs, etc., make sure that you click those here as well before clicking Next. Takes a couple of seconds, and then it's going to ask you about your revenue reduction. The SBA requires at least a 25% revenue reduction for the second draw eligibility. What you're going to do is you're going to enter your gross receipts and expenses for 2019 and 2020 below. This is going to be the total amount of revenue that you brought in. So Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. This is the total amount that we earned directly in 2019 for each quarter. Now, the 2020 gross receipts, these need to be able to show at least a 25% revenue reduction um, in at least one quarter. So, looking over the receipts that I have here, I have right here the amounts for every single quarter in question. 
and it looks like I had a 25% reduction all the way across the board. In this section, we're going to go ahead and also enter in the expenses that you had for each quarter. Enter in a zero for the quarters if you did not have bus if your business did not have expenses. As you can see, I entered in all of the expenses for my 2019 and 2020. After that, I click this box that said in accordance with Lundia's e-signature agreement, and then we're going to press next. It takes a couple of seconds, and now it's going to ask me some business questions. Starting at the top, I'm working our way down. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, voluntarily excluded from participation in this transaction by any federal department or agency, or presently involved in any vagrancy? In my case, we're going to click no. Has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a guaranteed or direct loan from the SBA or any other federal agency that is currently delinquent or has defaulted in the last seven years? Again, in my case, no. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with any other business? Again, in my case, no. Is the applicant, if an individual or any individual owning 20% or more of the equity of the applicant presently incarcerated for any felony, presently subjected to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in any jurisdiction? Again, in my case, no. Within the last five years, for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement, or false statement in a loan application or application for federal financial assistance, or within the last year for any felony, has the applicant been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded nola contendere, or been placed on any form of parole? Again, in my place, no. Is the United States the principal place of residence for all employees? I'm going to say yes. Is the applicant a franchise that's listed in the SBA's directory? Again, in my case, no. And is the applicant a franchise? Again, in my case, no. After you've clicked every bubble, go ahead and click Next. It'll take you to a page that looks like mine, where it says Owner Information. Has the ownership of the, uh, has the, ownership of the business changed since the first draw of the PPP? Again, in my case, it's going to be no. Please sign your name to, uh, below to certify the ownership has remained the same. Enter in your full legal name, and then press Next. Give it a couple of seconds for it to be able to fill out. After that, it's going to ask you for owner information. Do you or any individual own 20% or more of the business? In my case, it's a yes. What's your percentage of the business, direct inter or indirect, that you own? Then you're going to press next. After that, it's going to say to submit your application to your lenders, you are required to uh, provide the following documents. Let's go ahead and press next. So, we're going to enter in a whole bunch of pieces of information here. So first, we're going to click on ID, front or back. These do need to be full color or a picture, so we have the opportunity to be able to, ver uh, to verify your identity and make sure that it is, in fact, correct. So I've got my driver's license, front, driver's license, back, right here. Again, making sure that all borders are available and ready to go right there. Next, voided check right here. You will need to be able to make sure you have a voided check from your business account. Account number must match your banking statements. We're going to go right here. I have it named as blank check. That way it's really easy for me to be able to find in the system. Again, and then after that you can see down here at the bottom our uploads. Front and back of our driver's license and our voided check. After that we're going to press next. Give it a couple of seconds and then it's going to ask us for our 2019 payroll. Choose and upload. At, uh, choose one of the following and upload your 2019 documents. These are the documents that you're going to choose which ones you're going to upload. Your 2019 IRS Form 941, you must provide all four quarters. Your 2019 IRS Form 944, W-2, or third-party payroll processor report. In my case, I have all of my 941s, so we're going to go ahead and click 2019 IRS Form 941. So we're going to click Browse Files, Q1, Upload, give it a couple seconds. Browse files, upload, let's click that, press open, give it a couple seconds. Browse files, Q3, open, give it a couple seconds. And then, four, open, give it a couple of seconds. This has all of the documentation as you can see. Upload 1, 2, 3, and 4 are quarters 1, 2, 3, and 4 with IRS 941 and off to the side. And then we're going to press next. Give it a couple of seconds and after that it's going to ask for your supported file types. This is going to be your form 21 uh, this is going to be your form 1120S. So you're going to click browse files. 
you're going to find your form 1120S. Because of the type of corporation we are, we are an S core. That's why it's asking us for this. We went ahead, we found our tax doc, and then we went ahead and pressed next. After that point in time, it's going to ask you to choose and upload one of the following from 2020. It's going to ask you to be able to um, upload either your IRS form 941 for Q1 of 2020 or your third party payroll processor report. This must include the report from February of 2020. In my case, we're going to click IRS form 941. We're going to browse our files. We found that Q1 one more time. We're going to press open. Make sure that is in fact correct. Scroll down a little bit. That's your upload five and then press next. Then it's going to ask us for our basic demographic information. So it'll do things like ask for your position, I'm the owner, your veteran status, I'm not a veteran, your gender, your race, and then of course your ethnicity. So make sure that you click all of those to the best of your ability and then go ahead if you have another person that you'd like to add, go ahead and add another principal. If not, click next. After that, it's going to ask you to be able to sign and consent and make sure that you understand the following certifications. By checking the boxes and completing the form and signing below, you make the following representations, authorizations, and certifications. The applicant was in operation on February 15, 2020 and has not permanently closed and was either an eligible self-employed individual, independent contractor, or sole proprietorship. Yes. Current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. Yes. The applicant has realized a reduction in gross receipts in excess of 25%. Yes. The applicant has received a first draw paycheck protection program loan and before the second paycheck protection program loan is dispersed will have used the full amount including any increase of the first draw paycheck protection loan. Yes. The funds will be used to retain workers and maintain payroll or make payments for mortgage interest, rent, utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage costs, covered supplier costs, etc. Yes. I understand that loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum of the documented payroll costs, covered mortgage interest payments, covered rent payments, covered utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage costs, covered supplier costs, etc. Yes. The applicant has not and will not receive another second draw paycheck protection program loan. Yes. The applicant has not and will not receive a shuttered venue operator grant. Yes. The president, vice president, head of an executive department or member of Congress or the spouse of such person does not directly or indirectly hold a controlling interest. That's yes. Keep scrolling. The applicant is not an issuer, the securities of which are, are listed on an exchange registered as a national securities exchange. Yes. The applicant is not a business concern or entity. Uh, created in or organized under the laws of the People's Republic of China. Yes. The applicant is not required to submit a registration statement under Section 2 of the Foreign Act Agents Registration Act. Yes. The applicant is not a business concern or entity primarily engaged in political or lobbying activities. That's a yes. I further certify that the information provided in this application and the information provided in all supporting documents and forms is true and accurate in all material respects. That you understand that knowingly making a false statement to obtain a guaranteed loan from the SBA is punishable under the law, including 18 U.S.C. 1001 and 3571 by imprisonment of not more than five years and or a fine of $250,000. Yes? And last but not least... I acknowledge that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using required documents submitted. I understand and acknowledge and agree that the lender can share any tax information I have provided with the SBA authorized representatives, including authorized representatives of the SBA's office. Yes. After that point in time, it says applicant authorization, first name, last name. You're going to enter in your birth date. That way you've got this directly right here where you're signing it. Let's go ahead and enter that in here. Applicant gender, of course, as always, any and all information we give you guys directly in this application is 100% falsified for the sake of the application to make sure that it's as accurate as possible for your experience. Okay, let's go ahead and enter in this falsified social security number. Your home address, this is not where you do business. Um, this is actually your home address itself. However, if the home address and the business are address are the same, that's totally fine. Applicant title, applicant title. 
and then you certify that you have read all the statements, including it in this form, include the statements required by the law and executive orders, and you understand them, that the applicant, together with its affiliates, is an independent contractor, self-employed individual, sole proprietor with no employees, employs no more than 300 people, or employs no more than the majority owned or controlled by an ACE code. All proceeds will be used for business-related purposes as specified in the loan application and consistent with the Paycheck Protection Program rules. I understand that the SBA encourages the purchase to an extent feasible of American-made equipment or products. The applicant is not engaged in any activity that's illegal under federal, state, or local law. And for applicants who are individuals, I authorize that the SBA to request criminal information about me from criminal justice agencies. You've read all the information, you've read and received the Paycheck Protection Program disclosures, and you agree to Lendio's electronic record and signature agreement. After that, you simply pr press I acknowledge and accept the terms and press sign and submit. After that, it's going to be able to double check if you did ask, if you did say that the business address and home address are the same, that's totally fine. It does give you the option to be able to double check that just in case. If not, go ahead and press confirm and submit takes a couple seconds. It'll take you to a page that looks just like mine where it says success. We're reviewing your application. This is where you can currently see the status of your application. This is your application dashboard once you log in. Your username is going to be the email address that you use to be able to sign into your account and the password is what you set at the very beginning of this application flow. Now what's going to happen from here is the lender is going to reach out to you directly in case they have any questions, comments, concerns, or if they need to be able to try to help you with any additional information in your loan. But if you do run into any questions, comments, concerns, or difficulty filling out this application, feel free to reach out to us directly. Thanks so much.